What's up? Ian from Powerhouse Mitches, back again with Nathaniel Garrow, Hand of the Sigilite from Forge World. One of the Horus Heresy character series models, really fucking cool. Loads and loads of them are all amazing like that. I don't think I've seen a shit one yet, so whatever. And I'm sorry, I'm not sorry for swearing. <laughs> so, uh, I painted this one, it's on eBay at the minute. Again, you can find all, all the stuff on my, on my Facebook page and my eBay shop, which is uh, ebay.com, Powerhouse Miniatures. So, uh, really, really cool. I've been listening to the audiobooks at the minute, like The Flight of the Eisenstein and, or the Eisenhorn, I forget which one it is. <laughs> I've obviously been paying attention, as you can uh, as you can tell. And then there's a few that include Garrow uh, talking to Malkador and shit like that. And I won't uh, I won't ruin the the storyline with him, but really really cool. And obviously it's completely the same as the book. And again, without any spoilers, uh, he's got the bionic leg, which is sweet. And you can just I mean, there's only only a few cogs, but you can see on the inside, of course, just there. He's obviously got like prosthetics. So I had a load of fun with them, as I do with all of these. Uh, I can't believe how cool they are. Forge World is killing it, as always, with these ones. So I went for like a chrome effect. I know they went for like a darker colour scheme on uh, on Forge World, and a lot of it as well. They do like this grim, dark, weathering, like gritty chips, scratches, all that sort of shit. And it's not really my style. I don't really. It's like I don't like it. I like the way it is, but it's not my sort of one. So yes, it is clean. Yes, it's a bit brighter than it should be, and all that. I'm. You know, if you feel compelled to tell somebody that, you should look at your own life, honestly. Like, a few people put up on uh, one of my videos about the uh, Chaplain Cassius I did from Death Watch Overkill. I painted him in Ultramarines Blue and sold him as a captain on eBay. And he sold for, like, 40, 40 50 pounds just painting up single. You know, it was, it was good and it, it was painted well. And loads and loads of people commented saying, like, Oh, you should be black. You should be in black armour. What are you doing? <laughs> it's like, oh, come on, don't, be a, don't do that. Like, you should... If you're half typing in some negative YouTube comment, I, I would hope that most people would just catch a glimpse of themselves and think, oh, what am I doing? I should go outside. <laughs> you know, I, should do, I should do something and try and meet a girl or something. I don't know. Anyway, that's a bit, that's a bit nasty on my part. But, yeah, I'm just, I just paint them, and I'm not bothered. If you don't like it, then no offence, but I'm just... I, don't, I can't believe you think I'd care. Anyway, so the thing on the bottom, I've got some, like, blood effects on the inside of the arm, which is really cool. That's really, really, really quick. I used Tamiya Clear Red for years, but uh, Blood for the Blood God is more widely available, a bit cheaper, and then I believe it's slightly less toxic. Some of the smell, like, you should trust your nose sometimes, because if it stinks like the way it does, like, like a solvent, probably not good um, to, be, uh, to be getting. I'm a bit of a brush licker, basically. So if it gets in the water, I don't want to be putting that then in my mouth, or even small amounts, like if it is toxic. Like some of the Vallejo ones uh, are like that, so you've got to be careful, because... Um, tiny exposure but obviously over long periods of time and uh, it's probably just not good so the guy on the base Mephiston Red and Evil Sun Scarlet just blended in together I think it looks really nice I kept it really like uh, I'm trying to go for like that smooth thing that people like but just really didn't mix too many colours together excuse me so that uh, it gets a really like quite a subtle transition between the, between the two and then just underneath um Cantor blue, very thin layers to like shade it down. So in the next couple of months with my HD camera, I'm going to do a video tutorial series of how I build up various things. I'm probably going to do one on like tips and tricks on red, tips and tricks on true metallic silver, on skin tone, on human skin, on orc skin, stuff like that. I'm going to do quite a few different ones. I say it every time, but caveat, you know, with the caveat that I'm not the best in the world, but I've definitely got some cool tips and tricks for people that are. Um, like beginners and intermediates and stuff. So uh, that'll be one of them. But yeah, really pleased with the way that came out. The base comes to pieces, obviously, uh, where you can take him out like... And I don't want to do it with one hand, but yeah, you get it. It comes out on the, on the thing and it sort of splits with the Galvor back just on the bottom of the 32mm round base. So for Libertas, um, I've seen people doing that a lot just lately where there's these little dots on the power sword that like, I think it's the power field generators. So do like Sotek green and then Temple Guard blue just around the edge. And then with your finger, you kind of rub it across and it just takes the, the bit off. Is it to save you painting it back in? And like I said, I think even though I'm not like definitely one of the highest, you know, one of the best in the world, I do have quite a few little tips like that little, no, I mean, that's a shit one obviously, but a few good ones on speed paint. How to get good high level stuff done fast and uh, without cutting any corners, you know, without any of the negative connotations of doing something fast. By you know building up a great uh, look, but just quicker. 
So the base is all airbrushed with uh, it was like leather brown and then Ushabti bone from Games Workshop. I mix the Leo and Games Workshop. Citadel Air has been really good because you can match them to the paint pots which I use mostly. And then dry brushed with Ushabti bone and then white. Again, really really quick, but looks great. And then from a distance, like gives it a lot of contrast with no time. It took like five minutes. So yeah, the face um, because this is the, like the magic angle if you want. That's the that probably like there is the angle that you're going to photograph him from. So you get like a full shot of the armor. If you take it from from about there, where it's almost level, it looks heroic because he's like looking up words, the bolt are outstretched, uh, and Libertas like trailing behind. So that that was the angle that I photographed him from. So the face, if you can just see in there, I shaded off like as opposed to just um, as opposed to shading it just evenly. I did laterally, like left to right. If you look from this profile. So on the inside, it's very, very thin washes of um, Reichland Flesh Shade and then Mephiston Red, really, really thin. And then it goes bright towards the centre. So like I said, from I'm going to photograph it from that angle. And I know I'm going to photograph it from there, obviously. So from there, in the middle, uh, with Kislev Flesh. And then Ushabti Bone in like an, a tiny edge highlight. Um, the shadows are tiny, like very thin washes of purple, red, and a little bit of turquoise underneath the uh, the eyelid. It's to a point where you can't really even see it, but I think that your brain can sort of thing. I think it just gives it like very minor values that look really pleasing from a distance. And even though you don't try specifically with like the end goal of getting it as smooth as possible, which I think a lot of people do, or they're trying really hard to make it as smooth as possible. Um, fr from the way the light falls on the model, from the camera angle and from, from, from everything, it makes it look very very smooth and again that's a little little tip and trick so check back on my YouTube tube, uh, YouTube tube yeah. YouTube channel because I'm going to have a load of different tips and tricks like that um, like I said not to cut corners or to be cheap or to you know, none of the negative connotations whatsoever but to do stuff the highest level stuff in the smallest possible time without cutting corners you know without it being any any negative whatsoever and uh, yeah, so like I said, I'm not the best in the world, but I think that's what I can really help people with, is uh, staying motivated, keeping going, you know, being um, proactive and not burning out. As a commission painter in particular, loads and loads of people just burn out. They do too much too quick, you know, have unrealistic goals, blah, blah, blah. And uh, a few years in, people uh, just have to stop doing it or st stop enjoying it. It becomes more of a job than a hobby. And then, you know, that's the beginning of the end, sort of thing, so... Uh, yeah, it's for sale at the minute for £120. Uh, if you want to, I think he's on eBay, he will be on eBay at this time, he's not sold yet. So, like I said, I'm still learning, but this is probably the last chance I'll get, because uh, these sell really well, probably the last chance I'll get to do these videos. So, if you're interested, uh, you can find the thing on my, on my Facebook, on my eBay and all that, find all the links there. So, I think that's it. Cheers for watching.